My name's Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I'm here with the latest, as usual, from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today, I have lots and lots of NVIDIA for you. Hardly surprising, but what do I have for you today? Well, first off, we're going to kick things off with the DGX2, which is being touted as the world's largest GPUs with two petaflops of power. Yes, I said peta. And then we're going to move on to the Quadro GV100. And finally, we have a story regarding the upcoming lineup of GeForce graphics cards. As I said, however, let's start with the DGX2. Now, unsurprisingly, given that I said the word petaflops, this is not a product for you or I. It is a supercomputer, which is essentially 16 Volta GPU stacked together, making use of NV Switch, which is essentially when you boil it down to the nitty gritty, a high performance external interconnect. Now unsurprisingly this thing packs a hell of a punch. Now NV Switch also helps with all of this which I'll get to in just a second and makes it faster than a server rack with 16 Volta GPUs in a vanilla setup. If you had a GPU that was somehow this powerful it obviously would be faster than what we have here given that you've got 16 GPUs stacked together but you know we're talking what we can make now in reality and what they've made is a server that packs a total of 81,920 CUDA cores with 512 gigabytes of HBM2 memory as well as 14.4 terabytes a second aggregate bandwidth and 300 GB a second GPU to GPU and the power consumption is brace yourself 10,000 watts and weighs 350 pounds not exactly something you can keep in the bedroom now I do have a bit of a quote here from Jensen Huang himself who of course detailed all of this stuff at a GTC 2018 and he said quote DGX2 provides 10 times the processing power of DGX1 of six months ago unveiled in September of 2017 the exploration space of AI, the number of layers, the training rates sweeping through different frameworks with bigger networks, more experimentation, DGX2 couldn't come at a better time. How much should we charge is the question. It took hundreds of millions of dollars of engineering to create this. It's 399k for the world's most powerful computer. This replaces 3 million of 300 dual CPU servers consuming 180 kilowatts. This is 1 8th the cost, 1 60th of the space, 18th the power. The more you buy, the more you save. Now, I'm sure some of you are going, okay, that's all great and all, but what is actually driving the GPU cluster? Obviously, you can't just have a bunch of GPUs sitting there going, duh, you need something to, well, drive them. And it is driven by two Xeon Platinums, which on the assumption that they're the 8180 would have a total of 56 cores. And we also have 1.5 terabytes of RAM with 30 terabytes of NVMe SSDs. Now what makes this even cooler, if you ask me, is that DGX2 is actually the very first system to debut NV Switch. So obviously this is for the very, very high end. This is going to be for deep learning. This is going to be data scientists. This is going to be for computing. All of that sort of stuff. For example, the DGX2 can train FairSec, a state-of-the-art neural machine translation model, in less than two days which is a 10 times improvement on what we saw with DGX1. So given that the previous one, the DGX1, was only revealed in September of last year, not really all that long ago, we have seen an insane improvement in the technology available for people do doing deep learning, for people worrying about AI. Just goes to show you exactly how fast technology can move and as I've said numerous times before this is one of the things that I find most interesting about technology in this particular area is it just is moving at an insane rate so even if they, this isn't going to affect you or I directly it is still cool to watch the progression and see this huge jump that we've seen in just a few months. Unsurprisingly, the NVIDIA goodness at GTC just keeps coming, and we're going to move on now to the Quadro GV100. Now, as the name suggests, this does make use of the NVIDIA GPU architecture, and also features HBM2 alongside the largest HBM2 frame buffer ever used in a consumer-aimed graphics card. And you might go, okay, you have my interest, how much are we talking? And we have 32 gigabytes of HBM memory too. Now unsurprisingly, this is not exactly cheap. You're not exactly gonna get it at the shop with enough change left over to get some, uh, some sweeties. This is gonna cost $9,000. 
which is, uh, just to put that in a little bit of perspective, three times more expensive than the Titan V. And to be honest, I can hear my wallet burning from over here, even though I'll ne probably never ever be able to afford something that expensive. That's pretty crazy, but again, unsurprisingly, given what it has inside it, and the fact that, of course, it is designed for workstation and professional users, and it's targeting the very same demographic that the Volta GV100 that was announced last year was targeting as well. So... Let's talk specs, shall we? We have 5,120 CUDA parallel processing cores, 640 tensor cores. And we also have FP64 performance of 7.4 teflop, FP32 performance of 14.8 teflops, FP16 performance of 29.6 teflops, and tensor performance of 118.5. It is also going to take up 250 watts worth of your power. Now unsurprisingly, this rather impressive beast also supports the very cool technology that everyone's been raving about, including ourselves of course. Which Nvidia has reinvented the workstation by taking ray tracing technology optimised for our Volta architecture and marrying it with the highest performance hardware to ever put in a workstation. Artists and designers can simulate and interact with their creations in ways never before possible, which will fundamentally change workflows across many industries. Oh, and one last thing that I just wanted to add, as I did mean to mention it during the specification segment earlier, is regarding the memory architecture, of course, a big feature of this is that huge 32 gigs of HBM2, and we have 8 512-bit memory controllers, which of course results in a 4096-bit bus interface that again supports up to that 32 gigabytes of HBM2 VRAM. Now, this bandwidth is boosted with a speed of 850 MHz, which, of course, means increased transfer rates of 870 GB a second compared to the 720 GB a second we saw on the Pascal GP100. So, some very, very cool stuff, and unfortunately is a bit too shiny for your eye, of course. If you are flush enough, you're, of course, welcome to purchase it all you wish, but this is, of course, again, for workstations and higher-end stuff. We are yet to see anything GeForce out of Volta just yet, unfortunately. But that does kind of lead into our final topic, which is regarding the upcoming lineup of G GeForce, which is thanks to Tweaktown. Now, of course, given that we don't know what NVIDIA are actually doing after Pascal, there's, of course, been a lot of speculation that we're going to be seeing a GeForce Volta. There's, also, of course, been speculation that we're going to be something by the name of Ampere, which could indeed be Volta cut down. But now we have a story which was, again, published by TweetDown, and you can find that link in the description below this video. And basically, they're saying that the new series is not going to be the 20 series, so like the 2080, 2070, and so on, like everyone's been kind of calling it, just for convenience's sake, but rather the 11 series. Now interestingly enough this does actually line up with a previous report from the very same guys who reported news of a new lineup and according to their sources again today it is not only going to be the 11 series rather than the 20 series like we've been expecting and obviously everyone's been reporting in the last few months apparently we're not going to be getting the endings in 70 or 80 like we're used to either. And their source said, quote, the new cards won't necessarily end in 70 and 80 like we're used to. Unfortunately, they wouldn't speculate any further than this. So, for example, we could see the GTX 1185, the GTX 1150, that sort of thing. This could be in an effort to differentiate them from the 1070 and 1080. If we had, say, the 1180 or the 1170, just for example, that might sound a bit too similar in terms of, like, you know, marketing and all that sort of stuff which it might be why they would go this route, or of course, you know, you could kind of skip that whole issue and go with the 20 series, but they might not want to do that for other reasons. Perhaps they just want to go with the iteration of going one, then one, which would make sense, and obviously make more sense than jumping straight to 20, but of course, this is all pure speculation based upon what Tweaktown sources had to say. Now, of course, there's been a ton of speculation as to what NVIDIA are doing after Pascal, and unfortunately, there seems to be no solid answer to it. Obviously, there's a lot of speculation and reports floating around saying, yeah, NVIDIA are going to reveal Ampere or Volta GeForce at GTC. And I have looked to see if there was any sneaky mention of it by Jensen or anything like that. But unfortunately, it seems they're keeping shtum for the moment. They have yet to reveal what they're doing. So unfortunately, we're here to speculate until we can speculate no more. 
So it does seem it's going to be a future event that we're going to be seeing this revealed, or it could be any time they want. Obviously, if a video were to be like, "Hey, live stream tonight, guys," and you know, keep keep your eyes peeled for that G4 logo, then you know that would obviously get a metric ton of viewers, and you know, obviously, I'd obviously be there watching it, hoping to finally get an answer to the mystery as to what's going on. But unfortunately. All we have on that is speculation. The only things we have confirmed is the GGX2 and, of course, the Quadro GV100, which have already been over. So I will link in the description below this video a blog from NVIDIA, which kind of gives a TLDR, or, well, not even a TLDR, a very long do-read of what Jensen had to say at the conference. So if you want to read more, I do suggest you give that a look-see. It is definitely worth your time. I've definitely given you the cliff notes here of what was most interesting, but... I would suggest you check that out. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.